When it comes to audio interfaces, there's very little information available of which one to choose and why you may choose one over the other. It seems like every single one of them is the best. So you might have seen comparisons between different ones. These ones, especially the Vocaster 2 and the Zoom F3 are especially different, but maybe the Scarlett 2i2 is right for you. How do we determine? Well, first of all, the biggest factor is setup. Let's quickly go through what I have to do with this one versus this one to set it up. Once you have the software installed, it should be quite a basic process, but it's not quite all the same. For instance, the Vocaster 2, press the power button, it's set up. I can now record right now. Let's see what happens to the Zoom F3. Here I got my Zoom F3. I'm going to connect it, press power on just like the last one. Of course, the other one I could have left powered on and just connect it and be done. Now, this one I actually do have to press the power button. Next, still not connected as an audio interface, we have to go through the settings. Still have to set up USB audio interface on this to press the enter. And then I have to choose PC, Mac, or tablet. Then I have to choose float or linear. So I'm going to choose linear for the fun of it. Now it's finally set up as an audio interface. Quite a few more steps, not as simple as just doing it. The Zoom F3 maintains your 48 volt or non 48 volt setting internally. Well, your Vocaster 2 or 2i2, you just press the button. But let's say you're wanting to edit a video and add audio to it. Your volume is going to be low and you'll have to edit in post. Period. However, Audacity does have an update to fix the editing capability, so you can actually edit in post now. And to make something clear, what I mean by edit in post now with Audacity is editing the 32-bit float off the memory card. It only connect as an audio interface using linear, and 32-bit float connection will not allow this as an audio interface. So as my review states, you will need Mostly all these paid programs if you want to use this as an audio interface to the PC. But it requires more editing as well. Ooh, editing. Right now I have the Zoom F3 connected, but you can see the waveforms. They're much, much smaller right down here, and you can't even see it on this graph here. In OBS, I'm actually recording secondary-wise, and I have the volume way the heck up, so I can actually record to having to boost in post. I'm actually boosted 21 decibels and that is crazy. So if I have to edit and post and uh, I take this recording here to DaVinci Resolve, the max I can do is 30 decibel boost. Otherwise I have to use some other modification to increase my volume. Now I'm using the Vocaster 2. We can now see our waveforms and I'm not gonna clip as long as I keep my volume reasonable. I do have it near clipping. You can see it's just about peaking. Peaking means it's all the way at the top. But yeah, I can just, use this, not edit and post, and have the proper volume I need for my videos. Not a problem there, so yeah. And if we want to make absolutely sure I don't want to clip, I'm just gonna turn down my volume a bit, done. And I can edit and post just the same way as Zoom, but I have more headroom as long as I don't turn it too far down. Hmm, actually when I think about the Scarlett 2i2, a lot of the time didn't have enough volume to PC, especially if you're using the MV7, the SM7B dynamic microphones tend to be kind of quiet and if you turn it right up, sure you can get enough volume but you can get more hiss. Sure you can use a lifter, but the sound is not going to be as clean. That is only some dynamic microphones might need a lifter. Otherwise condenser mics are just as well with a Scarlett 2i2. Really, you don't need a vocaster to boost the volume for those. The Scarlett 2i2 does have left and right stereo separation, so you can have one person one microphone channel and on the other left or right channel. Which means you can edit one individually from the other. So if one person's really quiet and one person's really loud, if it's one channel audio like the Vocaster 2 is, the Scarlett 2i2 is the better choice than this. They call this for podcasters, but if someone else is quiet, they dropped the ball on this one. 
At least the Zoom F3 can edit in stereo and have two people talking. The point here is having left and right stereo separation is very, very useful because we can pull up the volume and pull down the volume individually, which can't be done on a mono channel device. Now, one other thing the Scarlett 2i2 does have is it has that quarter inch ports, which means you could technically get a quarter inch down to a one eighth inch adapter and also connect 3.5 millimeter devices without having much of a problem at all. And you just need those small little adapters that go one quarter inch to one eighth inch. Done. So that kind of simplifies things and makes connecting different devices actually easier than the Zoom F3 or the Vocaster 2. The Zoom F3, of course, has that advantage where I can actually record internally and use an adapter, which I show in this video, to connect those 3.5 millimeter devices. But the fact is that adapter is like five times more expensive, if not more, than the little tiny little thing. If you have a problem with clipping, then turn your volume down. Then I'm going to be more like the Zoom F3 and uh, your volume will be a bit lower. You're not going to clip as easy. Just don't turn it way the heck down and have to lift it a whole lot. But if you have to lift it 15 decibels, you'll be hard pressed to know the difference between the Zoom F3 and the Vocaster and you won't clip. Now the Zoom F3 just can't clip. It just simply lowers the volume no matter how loud I go. You might have seen people clip online, but for the most part, I think it's the microphone like the Rode NTG clips really easy and that's why I don't use it. You really can't tell though if you're clipping the Rode NTG if you're putting it far away, but if you're up close talking, watch for that little red dot that pops up near that little F symbol. That means you're clipping. One advantage the Zoom F3 has over the Vocaster 2 or the Skylet 2i2 is it has a high pass filter. That can get rid of some low end rumble sound or traffic noise that you may have in your environment. It has a little Bluetooth card you can get for this. This allows you to record at a distance and change your settings, but right off the bat, we have to choose if it's on or off. So you have to press a button before you can do anything. It's not gonna record yet, not do a darn thing until we press our little button. Then we can finally see our waveforms happening. So if we're doing line out or simply recording the field recorder, I can't do a darn thing until that time that button is pressed. Let's do this again. And I turn it on again. And press the record button. And nothing's happening, so you can see for yourself. Again, I have to press this button. Then I can record, as we can now see our recording light on. So this is useful if you want to know it's actually recording to the memory card. If you noticed, I now didn't have to press anything. I got rid of that Bluetooth adapter. If you're not doing time stamping, time codes that is, well, and it might be just more useful to save a bit of money and not purchase that Bluetooth adapter. So if you're more than 30 feet away from this and you disconnect from the device, it doesn't reconnect automatically. Kind of ruin the experience of having the Bluetooth device. So generally for myself personally, I don't have a team, I don't use this a distance, this is inconvenient. Now, like many things in life, there are sometimes inconveniences that are overlooked. I just press hold and it's not starting. I don't think I have such a thing that's so complicated, that's so confusing on any other device. But again, once we press it up, it's just something I want to note to you that you may face if you didn't know any better is where you saw where I pressed switch where I couldn't turn on and my controls are locked out. So if I'd accidentally press, beautiful. That is a beautiful feature. Again, that's something professionals and people that have a habit of little kids coming by or a cat or something pressing buttons on them are going to appreciate. There is no lock the setting feature in the Vocaster 2 or the Scarlett 2i2. When it comes down to the Vocaster 2 or the Zoom F3, they don't have any other ports other than XLR. However, my Zoom F3, I can actually make it quite sufficiently ran to 
3.5 millimeter. In fact, I can actually make it so the 3.5 millimeter microphone won't clip when connected here and recorded in here. So I can save my camera audio with this. Now, if I want to make it simple and don't need any adapters, I'm not gonna get the Vocaster 2 so much. I'm gonna get the Scarlett 2 i2, especially to instruments. If you're really big into playing guitar though, I wouldn't recommend any of these per se, because what I would recommend is the Volt 276, because it has a limiter that will actually help your guitar input from not distorting from being too loud. Pretty cool. Another thing that this has, that the Vocaster 2, or the Scarlett 2i2, which I sold off by the way, does not have, is a delay. Again, this is gonna be more so for professionals, or if you just can't match up your audio. We can see some webcams behind me with the Insta360 link where you can have some delay that was slightly off the audio. I can set my delay and have it synced. The Vocaster 2, the Scarlett 2i2, the Gala Wave XLR, and no Mi Ono interface I reviewed at this time have a delay feature. Very useful sometimes. This is what I like about this. It has good DACs for output volume. It doesn't matter if you're using the SM7B. It's pretty darn decent for just recording and going, getting it done, no post edit. You can turn the power off and you don't have to worry about it being connected at all times. And that's kind of convenient this way. This little guy, if you're just going to PC as an audio interface, I would not really recommend it. Ultimately, the question comes down to, is there anything that this can connect to that my Scarlett 2i2 can't connect to or the Vocaster 2 can't connect to? Well, with the right cables, I can make my mobile phone an audio interface. This is not gonna be an audio interface to my mobile phone. The Scarlett 2i2 is not gonna be an interface to my mobile phone. This can be, whether it's iPhone or Android. Where does the Scarlett 2i2 from Focus right fall into place here? Well, when it comes down to it, it's very basic, but it works dandy, especially if you're just copying the PC, you're not planning to do anything special, you just want to use OBS and whatnot. But if you're doing game streaming and you want multiple channel audio, OBS can do that, by the way. Software-wise, we have the software with this. This allows Bluetooth in. It has Bluetooth? That's amazing. Well, that depends. If you're not like playing music in real time, it's honestly not going to be really your thing because you just add music after the fact and edit. And you get better quality because it's not done through Bluetooth. And also you can control your levels. Real time, you can add music, podcasting, real time. That's kind of the advantage there. Podcasters. Real time, streamers, real time, that's your thing. Ultimately, the choice is yours for use case. But if you want to know more between the Scarlett 2i2 and the Vocaster 2, I do have a review. I'll leave a link in the description below. This is Eric and Abaos. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to help this channel grow. And if you're already subscribed, thank you very much. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day. Now, if you're wondering why I'm doing this video today, it's because I put up a poll and someone clicked that they wanted to see more high-end audio and interface mid-high-end range. 